Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the March 28th, 2024 Board of Health meeting at 601. Agenda number one, open meeting. Number two, roll call. Dan Grabowski? Yes. Jasmine Canones? Yes. Custis? Excused. Yeah, thank yes. you. Nick Dado? Excused. Thank you. Kevin Splain? Present. Thank you. We will now move to the, to the public hearing at 6 o'clock. The amendment of the Board of Health fee schedule. So we'll just open and bring this to the uh, to the public. Well, so was that right? Did we go on that last time? Mm -hmm. Does anybody wish to speak on this agenda item? <coughs> please enter the, whoever wishes to speak, please enter, go to the podium. <laughs> this is about the fee schedule only. You have, well, three, you have three minutes. Can you give us your name and your address? My name is Mike Robo, 102 School Street. And the recommendations I'm looking for is a possible every other week plan for senior citizens or low income people. And then the other question at hand is I can't opt out till the 4th. Mm -hmm. I get charged for them three days. Mm -hmm. So as the second one, you have 30 days to opt out. I don't think you, you won't be charged for those three days. Okay, okay. You have up till, till all of April to yeah, the third yeah. to top house. So that's okay. that's your, your leeway period. Yeah, yeah. You won't be getting any bill for that. But you have to prove to the Board of Health that you, yeah. that you, some kind of receipt or mm -hmm. email or whatever that yeah, you're, you're locking up. All right. They do it every other week plan and every week plan there. And then every, uh, their, their garbage cans are bigger than ours. And what was the first question again? If, if we could have a senior citizen discount and a low income discount every other week instead of every week. I have my trash, they only pick up once a month. As, as far as that is concerned, everything's already been set where mm -hmm. the fees are, are locked in. Everything, as you know, right now won't be changing. Okay. As of now, maybe once the program keeps going on with, with time, we can, we can tweak it a little bit, but as of now, we can't. Okay. Yeah, my parents recommended that because they live in Dudley and they have a senior citizen discount. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, but they have a dump. They drive it down there. And then he was saying, like, once you opt out, you have to be opt out for a year. Say you miss one of them cycles, do we get charged for that? <clears throat> as far as as far as the payment? Because you, even through LaBeouf, it's four payments a year, or you can just pay it off in one shot. Say you do two cycles and then somehow you miss a cycle. Oh, is people going to get fined for that? If you miss in the three month period, a whole cycle, you, you'll be automatically dropped from the program. All right, I see what you're saying. In other words, you, you got to keep going you, proof. As far as it, the payments, if, you know, if, if, if a bill is on a due date, I'm sure you can come down and say, listen, I might be a couple of days late, there was nothing will, you you probably won't, won't, you know what I mean? Okay. But as far as missing that, that a complete cycle, if there's no payment, mm. then you'll be dropped automatically. Okay. From from the uh, from the South program from from the Casella uh, curbside. Okay. Now, if I opt out, go to the buff. Do you guys come take my trash cans? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because that's that's yeah. property of the town. Yeah. We don't own those. And then if we came back, we'd have to pay, like you were talking about. You wouldn't. If, if the town delivers the, the uh, trash cans, you, you you wouldn't pay. Okay. But there might be a fee to get back in, a small mm -hmm. fee of ten dollars or so. Okay. But, to get okay. back in, Not, nothing where it's going to drastically change anyone's uh, uh, financial structure. Okay. But there might be a real penalty, not not much. But but you will be getting you, you, uh, the cans back. All right, cool. That's pretty much all. The, I the, know. the totes or whatever, whatever you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can keep the totes. If you opt out, we're going to be collecting them. But if you if you opt out, we'll be picking them up. Yeah. All the totes. Yeah. Totes. Because because we you don't, the citizens don't own the totes. Okay. The, the, so the, the property of um, our town. Okay. But if you, opt, if you opt back in, there won't be a fee to uh, for those same totes that you uh, had picked okay. up. But there might be a small um, charge on to get back in. You know, nothing, 10 bucks maybe or so. Something that now, do you guys charge us for recycling? Or is that a That's all part of the program. I didn't know if it was free. It, it, our trash is the same as it is as it was. In other words, nothing's going to change, except other than the fact that we'll be paying for our own trash. Okay. That's pretty much all I need to know. You know, most of these other things, if people got apartments or whatever, in the other meeting, like most of that didn't pertain to me. You know, 
But the next time you guys tweak it, I'll be back to recommend the low income plan. We're always posting stuff. Okay. Any changes to the trash, the <clears throat> website, or anything? We're always making posts. If there's any changes or recommendations, <clears throat> you can go on our website or you can go on public access TV. Okay. Or maybe sometimes there'll be flies in the, in the board of fellows. Mm -hmm. so, so there's always something. Yeah, because there's like 17,000 something people in our town. It's like 1,300 something low income whites, 800 something low income blacks, and 1,400 low income mm. Hispanics, which probably makes like, you know, 3,200 or something if you add it up. I didn't do the exact math in the survey that's online. It was from last year. I don't know who does these surveys all the time, but just fun facts of the day, you know. Okay. But I'm pressed for time. I got other dates. I do a guitar practice and practice with my band, so I'm heading out. I hate to come in here. Welcome. I'm not going to leave, but no, you're welcome to do so. You know what I mean? But thank you for giving me your thank time. You for, thank you for All coming right, up. No problem. Yeah, have a nice day. Are there any other citizens wish to speak, please? Yeah. On the fee schedule? Yeah. yeah. We're talking about no. the fee schedule? The fee schedule. The waterfall fee schedule. The trash. The fee schedule. So, uh, on the fee schedule, it said that for April 65 $65. And for a trash recycling, or a trash container, it's sixty-five dollars. Now that's in the seller contract. So why is that in the bylaws? That's not part of the bylaws. It's part of the contract. What does the bylaws have to do with the cost of the container? That's my question. Dan, can you answer that one? Certainly, Chair. Thank you. Yep. Um, the reason for this is in the event we do have to supplement and deliver toters. Per contract, Casella is, is only required to do 100 toters per year. That's break it up 50 trash, 50 recycle. Now, the health department will be responsible for delivering toters to new residences, a newly constructed home, someone new in the program. But in the event, that they cannot meet their obligation, we still have some toters at the uh, wastewater treatment facility. Totaling about, my last count, uh, oh, 120 recycles, 80, 80 to 90 toters. They are the same ones that you have with the serial numbers, they're brand new. But they were not, unfortunately, in, integrated into and taken into account during uh, the construction of this agreement, which surprised me because I would I thought initially that they would use this and uh, they're already paid for, they're expensive. So uh, in a way to be equitable and fair, we chose to keep this into our fee schedule. This will be um, a delivery fee for each toter. And it, it will specifically be under the purview of the health department and in our jurisdiction to make that uh, determination if we need to deliver this or not. So quite frankly, we don't want to get in a precarious situation where 100 toters have been delivered and there's still a need for the residents. That's the logic. So at the last meeting, you said that the health department would no longer be delivering <coughs> Yes, because we are currently right now still doing that, and we have been. <laughs> So, again, referring back to the agreement which was constructed that Casella will do it, this is a, a supplement to it. But you are, you are absolutely right in the fact that it is solely the, um, the responsibility of Casella. Um, and that's integrated, again, in the, in the uh, agreement that was made. Do I feel that it is sufficient? No. And the reason why is I believe there'll be a need for other, other uh, toters. And that's why I kept this uh, fee schedule. And I request that to be left in there to, uh, to assist the residents with, with obtaining toters, in which we have. Okay, but you specifically said you were not going to deliver mm -hmm. toters. But now you're saying you will deliver toters. Yes, under, okay. under different circumstances. You also said at the last meeting that you would be eliminating the delivery fee. Well again this this fee is 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 not set. This is this has been constructed in order for the approval of the 
uh, the Board of Health members. Okay, so this is again in right now an idea and uh, a recommendation for me and our team. So this this may be enacted, this may not, but. Uh, as everything has been so fluid and evolving and having these toters, it would be a complete waste to have these toters just sit there, brand new. And I had to refer back and make that decision as the Director of Health. Okay, with the Board of Health Chairman just said that this would not be changed. So is it going to be changed or not? The, is there going to be a fee or not? Last meeting you well, said the, again, this fee is, is right on here. This is up for discussion mm -hmm. and approval from the board. So that was could, placed for that reason. So they could eliminate it? Yes. Yes. And if this fee is eliminated, then uh, those toters will sit and only be used for new construction. Are we talking about the delivery of toters? Delivery, replacement or additional recycle, re residential recycling containers. Replacement of residential trash or waste toters. In the event, contingent upon the event, that again, to reiterate, should Casella run out of, out of toters and, yes. and meet their obligations of 100, mm -hmm. now what are we doing? And there's a need. Because well, I thought we waived that fee last, at the last meeting of the $40, $40 delivery charge. Did we did. The right. $40 delivery asking. fee is not on the draft schedule. Let's call it a delivery fee, $65 delivery fee. That's what he called That's it. for the replacement Replacement cost, cost. not cost. delivery fee. The delivery <clears throat> fee was deleted from the fee schedule. Well, that's not what I read. It doesn't say delivery fee. Well, that's what we're it's saying now. Replacement. <laughs> <clears throat> well, again, replacement would also involve delivery, as it's now. So when you pay for a total right now, $50, that's the cost of the toter, and that includes the delivery. No one picks them up. We deliver them. And you're right. That delivery from us is, is to be uh, stopped. The only time we will reenact that delivery is if Casella has met that obligation of 100 and there's they they don't they won't deliver any more toters and we don't know what when that can happen it could be in a couple months it could be half a year again the way i read the contract they will be delivering 100 toters each to the health department but it doesn't say they're only going to be delivering 100 toters it just says to the health department that's the way i read the contract okay well that's that's not my understanding because they they will deliver, they, they initiated a cost of a toter coupled with the fact that there's a delivery fee. Am I correct to say that? On the contract, yes. yes. On the contract. Absolutely. Yes. And we met with Casella and, the, and that's what they indicated. All right, well, that's not the way I Okay. Well, thank you. Okay, are there any other citizens that wish to speak? Joe? Do you wish to speak? No, I'm good, thank you. Can you come up here, please, sir? I came in a little late there, so well, I don't can, know can you, get to, can you get to the podium, please? My name is Ted Dubsky. I live on 120 Sale Street. We're talking uh, right now about the amendment to the Board of Health fee schedule. The fee schedule? The fee schedule. Okay, because I have something else I want to ask. Okay. okay. We'll come back. I'll come back. Thank you. <clears throat> Are there any other citizens that wish to speak on the Board of Health fee schedule? Seeing none, well, uh, can, can you come up to the is, the... is the fee schedule include the 115 and everything? Is the body check going 46 months? Um, is the fee schedule the 115 that we're going to be paying? Is that included in this no. discussion with the fee? The, 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 the trash is just is, is, uh, is, is trash pickup. That has oh, nothing to do with yes. the fee schedule. Okay. The fee schedule is all, everything else other than the trash. All right. The curbside. Are there any other citizens that wish to speak on the fee schedule? Seeing none. Do you have any discussion amongst ourselves? I have none. 
Jasmine, do we have any discussion amongst ourselves? Let's so we, so we have to vote on this tonight, right? Do I have an understanding on what we discussed? So we, we vote on this? Motion. Second. Gus Steves, excuse. Nick Dadle, excuse. Jasmine Canones. Yes. Kevin Spleen? Yes. Dan Grabowski? Yes. Thank you. Our next hearing is not till 6.30. We still have a few minutes left. Can we just move on with our regular meeting? Just take a break. So we just take oh, we, a break? We can, yeah. to accept the meeting minutes. Okay, agenda item number three. To accept the, uh, the, accept the meeting minutes from March 14th, 2024. Second. Kevin Spleen? Yes. Jasmine Canones? Yes. Dan Grabowski? Yes. Thank you. public hearing upstairs in the town council chambers. Okay, welcome back everyone. It, it's 641. We're going to resume our public hearing. We're upstairs now in the town council's chamber. And our public hearing is the amendment of chapter 2, storage and disposal of solid waste. Does any... Does anybody have, wish to come up and speak on this agenda item? State Hello. your name, please. Mike Marchetti, 120 Maria Avenue. Um, I just have a couple questions. First of all, just to make, I know I'm probably being redundant, but just to be clear, you are not going to deliver the totes, or you are going to deliver the totes? We will deliver the okay. totes right. when we feel it's necessary. All right. I just wanted to clear that up. For opting in or out, homeowners will be automatically enrolled unless they opt out. So far, there's been nothing posted on the website about it, nothing in the mail about it. So are you going to post something so people know about how to opt out? We have been posting it, yes. And we have advertised this, and we receive a lot of walk-ins into our office where we explain the entire process to the residents. Uh, I can honestly say uh, we've had a large influx of calls, and people will call our office, and either myself or Maritza, and even our uh, new admin assistant, uh, Patty Julian, will assist individuals with clarifying the process. Well, I went on the website before I came here, and there's nothing on there about opting out. Just wanted to keep you informed about that. Thank you. Also, I was informed by some residents, if they opt out and they go with a private contractor, when they come into your office, they, they were told that they must provide a BIN number from their toters. Is that anywhere in the bylaw? No, that is an internal process w which we've enacted, and we've had to do that for this reason. It's a standard operating procedure, okay, of the health department, because we need to obtain those toters. Just to reiterate, the toters are property of the town, and we need to uh, pick those up, which I, I fundamentally understand now that we will get some assistance from the DPW in order to do that. Um, and the, really, to simplify the logic is, if Casella is going down the road and they see these toters and somebody has opted out, and let's say they're using another service, a local one, and those are in the road, they may be misinterpreted of still being in 
the program and it, it, it causes conflict with the, the Casella team as they're picking up. And uh, they can, again, um, not understand that someone has opted out, simply meaning they are on the road for pickup. So it's a way to, um, to stop this. So there's nothing on the town website about providing a bin number. There's nothing in a mailer providing a bin number. It's just an internal a, a policy of yours to require the bin number of your old containers, correct? Yes, yes. It's, it is, so again, nobody another, knows about this. Yeah, and that's really the only logical avenue we could take in order to obtain these toters. Get them off. We do have a database currently with the health department, and this is, again, a measure that we could keep track of the toters. They will be, um, they will be taken away and placed at the wastewater treatment facility for other purposes if we deem so, but. All right, it's very logical. It's also logical to let people know about it. So, um, so far there's, um, if you opt out in April, you have to wait until, you can only opt out until June 30th and then you have to let the board, uh, health department know that you want back in with a 45 day notice. So basically you have to let the town know by May 16th that you want to opt back in. Correct? Yes, but we would like to change that, and that would be the opt-out till June 15th. Uh, this was a discussion that was had with the town manager, uh, the treasurer, um, and in, in fact, this, it, it, the regulations have to also accommodate the billing, okay, and, uh, and that structure. So that will either be revised today or I can tell you uh, there will be another meeting which we'll ha have to have in order to institute further amendments to the regulations All to right, accommodate that. Thank you, so now okay. it's moving back to May 1st if you want to opt back in. Now if you don't opt in by July 1st, you have to wait a year to opt into the system? Why, why do you have to wait a year? Is it that difficult to put somebody's name in the system? Again, that is something that we are not doing that. That is gonna be controlled by the billing department, the treasurers, okay? And this is, again, an amendment that is on the table right now, okay? And that provision is going to be subject to um, being redone. You don't make water and sewer users wait a year, so it doesn't make sense to make uh, people who wanted their trash pickup to have to wait a full year to opt back in. I mean, what happens if they go with a private contractor and for some reason, just as an example, they go out of business or they renege or something, then what? They, they don't get any trash picked up for a year? Or what? Well, uh, well, again, uh, what I can okay. tell you is this was a suggestion made by the Board of Health members during the last meeting. All right. Thank you. Now, if a home or apartment is empty, property owners will still be required to pay for curbside trash collection for each unit, correct? Correct. Do you charge water and sewer users if their apartment or house is empty? I don't know. I don't do the water and sewer billing. You do have an inspections department that has a list of all the empty houses, so you, it's easy to find out whose house is empty, right? In theory. You don't do it, but it's in your bylaw, so. The city of Springfield has a curbside collection. They do offer an opt-out if your house is empty. So I don't see why we couldn't offer the same thing. They, they provide a trash fee change form. One of the reasons for opting out, I am planning to hire a private hauler. Property has been or is now vacant. So it's pretty easy. I did contact them. They said not everybody opts out because it's, it's difficult to get back in, but they do offer that option. Uh, they also offer a elderly and low income discount, just so you know. Mm -hmm. uh, sharing of toters is not allowed, correct? Again, this is contingent upon approval from the board. No. Correct, that's correct, Mr. Okay. So why not allow it? I mean, if there's one person upstairs, one person downstairs, they're only putting out two bags. Why not allow them to share a toter? What would be the harm in that? Private contractors allow it. 
This whole idea with the sharing of totes, this, this trash is structured to keep our costs fair for everybody in town. This took a lot of time to come up with. A lot of people think it's unfair. I'm a senior citizen. Tomorrow will be two weeks for me to take out my trash. I'm not taking it out, so I have to wait for the third week. This affects us too. This whole thing is devised to keep everything fair. And this is the fairest trash curbside that we can come up with. All right, all so you don't have to take it personal. Up, this is the fairest. It may right. not look fair, but it is. You're not, you don't have to take it personal. I'm just asking questions about this. Okay. I'm also a senior citizen. I also have trash pickup. I understand. I put out one or two bags. I see somebody down the street, they put out 10 bags. I'm paying the same as they, so they are. So I don't really think that's fair either. However, this is the plan you're going with. Delinquent bills, if, a cur if someone doesn't pay their bill, curbside collection will stop, and the town will put a lien on their property if they don't pay the bill, correct? Yes. So how does that keep the town beautiful if you're going to stop collecting their trash? I don't understand that. There must be a way to work through that. Is there a way to let them pay monthly? Or? As, far as, as far as the payment, you know, if, if you come to the town hall to, and you tell them something, be a couple days later or weeks, they're not going to just immediately take, just no, cut you from the three program. Months. If you three go delinquent, months. it's like, any, like a card, credit card payment. Right. If you're delinquent, then there are penalties to pay, and this is just a penalty. If, right. you, if you don't, there are means. No I'm just one talking wants to about, throw you off the trash I'm program. talking about the wording in your bylaws. I'm right. not talking about your personal feelings about it. I'm just no, telling understand. you, in, in the bylaws is what I'm reading. I so, understand. Thank you. Commercial waste disposal and storage. Am I reading that correctly, that you're not going to allow small businesses to opt in? A small business, for instance, a beauty salon, mm -hmm. and she has an apartment upstairs. You're not going to let them opt in? Because we did talk about that on the curbside collection committee, which I chaired, you were a member, and you were a member, mm -hmm. and we all agreed that that would help keep the cost down for all. So am I reading this, that you're not going to allow it? A, a, a home business, are you referring to? Or let's say a lady has a hairdresser downstairs. She's got a, a hair salon. Upstairs, she has an apartment. She mm -hmm. wants to have curbside collection. Are you going to allow her to opt in? If, if she's identified as a commercial entity, um, she, is, she will not be allowed in the curbside. Okay. All right, so like I and, said, and when we were all serving on the curbside sure. collection committee, mm -hmm. which you were also serving on, yes, I do we recall. talked about this, and we thought it would be a good idea because the more people that you let opt in, the lower the cost for all. And not only that, it helps with recycling rates. If you don't let her opt in, she's going to continue to throw her trash and her recycle in one bin. Now, this, what I have to reference is the zoning bylaws here and whether a home business constitutes a commercial entity. And that is by, by zoning, okay? So again, the definition is if someone is defined as a commercial entity, commercial business, okay, they are not going to be allowed in the program. All right. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Joseph Dow, 736 Worcester Street. Uh, I want to say thank you for uh, the Board of Health member and the Board of Health uh, Department for working hard to make sure our citizens and ours uh, get the right service for the town. Uh, I know you guys, this is the first time we get into that type of program, so it's a lot of change in the future or uh, adjust and update it will be. I know a lot of citizens are frustrated today. Uh, they worry about certain things. But again, these guys are uh, doing their best to try to make everyone get the right service and keep the town clean, especially South Bridge. It's a lot of multifamily in uh, three decades and four decades. Uh, as a citizen, I, I will uh, thank you guys for taking all these uh, frustrated and all these questions, and it's hard to answer all tonight. And I'm sure a lot of uh, adjust is going to be in the future. And I'd like to add it one more thing to you guys, if you can look at it. So if somebody help off and uh, get a casella to give them a service, let's say every two weeks, uh, pick up cheaper from the town, it's going to be the same uh, toast the town use, or it's going to be different colors to be able to recognize uh, they have uh, not town service, uh, private service? 
Yes, yes. The, uh, the toters that will be utilized by other companies, um, they will be different colors. Um, How about Casella? And, and they have the wording on there. And it, the Casella about, okay. will be able to differentiate during pickup. Yeah. So, what's theirs and what's So Casella what's their will others. have different toast from the town as well? Because the town saying Casella on them. So yes, if I call Casella yes. today, I hop up from you guys and then he, they give me a better deal every two weeks or whatever. Sure, sure. It's going to be the same color, same toast, or it's going to no, be different? No, no, no. Okay, I misunderstood. Yes. Uh, the, well, again, that's going to be up to Casella, uh, the, new, the new toters, whatever they have. Um, the logo will be on there. Uh, I believe serial numbers, all of that. It's going to say the town of Southwest yes. as well or no? Yes, yes, I believe so. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay, thank you. Ted Dubsky, 120 Sale Street. I was downstairs when it wasn't the exact same topic. But the previous Mark Marchetti mentioned something about the opt-out, which I guess you guys are going to have further discussions because of the way things are going. So I have a situation. We have a family property. My father passed away. That was six years ago. Basically, it's my sister and I. She is a resident of Florida. She hasn't been back here in four or five years. We do no water usage, trickle charge for electricity just to keep the cameras on, and there's been no trash whatsoever for almost four and a half, five years. There's not gonna be any more trash because we're eventually going to clean out the house and I'll get a big, huge dumpster. So why am I gonna to have to pay for something that's not picked up and not being used? has been used for four and a half, five years now. So I wanted to know, with that opt-out, I want to opt-out as the family trust, only we have no trash to tell you where it's going. So that's like an exception to the rule. So that's what I want to figure out there. If, I'm not the only one saying this because I, I was at the senior center today. I've been several other places there where they've had other meetings there. And we have a lot of seniors like ourselves who are not here. We're in Florida, Arizona, we're down the Cape, et cetera. We don't generate any trash whatsoever. So that whole opt-out, which I've already done with my primary, is that how am I gonna take care of the family house that there's nobody in? And I'm gonna get charged for something that you're not picking up, we're not utilizing anything, and you can check the records, the water and sewer, there's been no uses whatsoever, which is why a lot of seniors are saying the same thing. We have a duplex there, and one side of the duplex there, there's no one been in there for 20 years because we inherited it. But you're still gonna charge them 115 times four every year for something that doesn't exist anymore. So that's why that whole opt out, how do you opt out one side or the other side? But my biggest thing is how do I opt out my family trust house of my father where there's been no uses whatsoever. Well, I have a question for you. Do you pay taxes on your property? All paid up there. Right. I went down there for asking. They can all tell you everything's all paid up. The water, sewer, taxes, everything all paid up. And, that, and that's great. Now, when you're not living in that house, you're still paying taxes for that house. Am I correct? I do that with all my other properties, too. This is just one of those things that the 115 is designed to help everybody out the best way. Some people are not going to like it, and I understand that. But it's the same thing. You pay taxes on your house. You pay, you pay, all your bills are paid. This is one of those bills. That's, a, that's, a, that's the simplest way that I can say this. But I'm just trying to ask you something that's just common sense. I, I understand there what you're saying. There is no usage whatsoever. I understand. I want to opt out. Oh. But you're requiring me to give you some place where the trash that does not exist, where it's going. Yes. There is no trash, so well, I can't exactly go to Casella and well, says, uh, I'm opting out, but I'd like to have a contract with you. However, you're not picking anything up, so I'm going to give you an arbitrary payment every quarter or every month or whatever for something that doesn't exist. Does that make sense? 
I understand, I know, you're trying to take care of the whole town, but there are some exceptions there, so until you all resolve this whole well, opt-out... Well, I'll, I'll give you the answer now. The answer is yes. You still are? Yeah. Because that's, that's the way... That's, this is how we came up. This is not... We just didn't do this overnight. That, so the, so the what you're trying to say is, yes. so definitely, like, I could probably go to LeBuff and say I want one toter. You keep the toter. Here's my contract. I'll give you forty, fifty dollars, or whatever it is there. But don't come and pick up any trash. I'll give the town a piece of paper saying this is where the non-existent trash is going. So I am opt out. So you're not going to bill me because the other contractors are already going to get my payment for nothing. Correct. Okay. That's all I want to know. It's just that it doesn't make sense. My name is Craig Chaplin. I live at 227 Eastford Road. Um, Casella has stated that due to lack of local support, insurmountable political and regulatory hurdles, and extremely high cost to develop airspace or whatever it was, we could not generate an adequate risk-adjusted return and close the Southbridge landfill, leaving us in the situation that we're in now. As of March 21st, last week, Casella is worth $5.65 billion and generated $360 million in 2023. <clears throat> the CEO, John Casella, has paid $4.12 million in total compensation, which includes a bonus of $1.6 million, not to mention the other executives or whatever Casella's investors feel they are entitled to. So while we are to believe that Casella cannot afford to mitigate pollution and other environmental issues leading to the closure of the Southbridge landfill, that's just not the case. Their money is, they're choosing to spend their money on CEOs and increasing their wealth. 115 per quarter, per unit, 460 bucks a year in my case, it's not a lot of money. Sure, but I will assure you that my $460 is not going to Casella, and I encourage the rest of my residents in Southbridge to do the same. Uh, as far as questions for the Board of Health, uh, what recourse do we have? Can we do anything now to stop this? What if I don't want to pay to have it removed? What if I load it up in my car and dispose of my trash myself? Are, we are indeed paying Casella for these services. Why are we allowing them to dictate the terms so severely? For one thing, with this, with this curbside, this has been going on for a year and a half. This, this, is, this is what the uh, subcommittee, mm -hmm. the ad hoc trash subcommittee, which, right. was, which was we had countless meetings, the Board of Health. We have had other meetings at the community center along with the town council. This is what we came up. This wasn't overnight. This is something that took time, believe it or not. And it took a year and a half. And this is the best that we could come up with. We Yikes. looked at all kinds of different ways. And if we would propose any other way, then I don't think I'd make it out of the building tonight. Mm -hmm. So this is what we came up, to, come, came up with. And the answer to your second question, if you were disposing your trash on your own, mm -hmm. well, if you live in town, and you would, you would, if you live in town and you're getting your trash picked up right now, like the way it is, you, you would still get a bill. So, you, I mean, uh, this, it doesn't make any sense. And as, right. far, as far as opting out, you have that right to opt out. Right. And you have, you have, you can do, you have one or two choices. No one's going to say anything bad about your choice because we all have choices. Mm -hmm. So if that's, if that's what you would have liked, then that's fine. We wish you luck. Right. All right. Good enough. Are there any other citizens that wish to come up? Now, are we moving to the uh, third pub? So are we going to vote on this now? Oh, 
I'm sorry, Dan. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Chair. I just want to make an announcement to, to really make it clear to everybody that's in attendance here. What the really rationale and the premise of this is in regards with the Board of Health. We do not want to adversely affect the sanitary conditions of the town. We want to uphold compliance standards. We don't want to undermine citizens' rights. We've heard a lot of compelling um, statements tonight. But ultimately, the Board of Health has the right to amend this regulation and, and, and do it when necessary to protect public health. That's, that's really, again, to re reiterate the logic and the rationale of the amendments to this regulation. We are not solely involved in the billing, nor did we come up with uh, and, and intervene in the contract, the request for proposals, et cetera. Those decisions were made by other entities. So I just want to bring this to your attention because we've been getting a flood of questions pertaining to billing. How we're doing this. Again, what is our public health duties to protect the citizens of, of this town? To keep the scene clean. And we have quite a job every day. And we do our best. So in order to mitigate and even negate trash pileups, accumulation of refuse, debris, etc. Illegal dumping, littering. We have to enact measures that are straightforward, that are equitable and fair, but the whole idea is to keep the trash from being improperly placed or stored. And ultimately, that is the objective of this amendment. And if you were to look at the heart of these regulations, this is the true heart of it. This is the way the Board of Health needs to enact measures in order to keep gross and sanitary conditions from prevailing and being found in this town. And let's, let's be direct, it is already a challenge, and it has been a challenge, of simply having trash collected and disposed of in this town. And we can refer to what the root causes are, but that is the reality. I've been here for a year and a half, and the biggest challenge I have had, one of the, is trash collection. Now, honestly, when I first got here, I think, and I thought to myself, this, this should be straightforward. But no, it seems to be inevitably a very big challenge for this community. And you can see it in the streets. Now with this taking place, we don't want to put ourselves in a precarious situation or put the residents in a precarious situation where again, we have accumulation of trash, which ultimately leads to diseases, filth, and rodents. So, collectively, this is our prerogative. This is the avenues we need to take in order to protect health and safety of this town. Thank you. Any more discussion? Yes, sir. You have to go to the podium, sir. You, you, won't, you won't be recognized. You have to go up to the podium, sir. Yes, you do. Well, you're not going to be recognized. Understood. Understood. And we hear this and I, quite a bit. And I understand the removal of trash. It's an important part of it. Why is it that you're charged the same rate as, as, as a five or six person union when I'm only producing one bag every two or three weeks? 
because this is the formula that was uh, brought forth. And again, in order to be fair, we, a, a dwelling unit, a one family, is considered a dwelling unit, one family. So if somebody has a building that has four units, they're gonna be charged four times per unit. Or have a little dwelling. Dan, I have to stop this. The gentleman's out of order. Unless you want to go to the podium, sir, you're not allowed to speak. Dan, the gentleman has an option to go to the podium and speak. Well, okay, does anyone have any more discussion? We have a letter from a citizen. We have a letter right now that... Are there any other... Okay. You'd like to go to the podium, please? Michael Chickering, 46 Fox Run, 30 years resident there. Um, no trucks come up Fox Run. There are nine units on Fox Run. Eight of them are occupied, so there are eight families of two. We bring all our trash to the street, and you say we're trying to keep the town clean. Casella picks stuff up, it gets thrown all over the place. There are barrels that sat there and we called for a year and Casella wouldn't pick them up. So are you saying that I can't hire a company that will do a better job without proving to you that they're picking up the trash better than what Casella did? I have to show you that I have, they're picking up for three units, but they're already going to do a better job than what Casella has been doing. So are you saying I don't have the right to hire a company unless I pay them for three units and get a contract for three units, even though they're not even, it's, the, the unit's empty, it's been empty for 10 years since my wife's mother died. Understood. Each unit is required to have services. But if I opt out? If you opt out and you can substantiate opting out with hiring an, another waste company, waste services, okay? And it entails those three units, you can legally opt out, okay? And, so and how are you gonna require them? Like, are they gonna have to give you a number for three bins or wh what is your requirement for them to say that they've got a contract with me? Do I have to get three the separate The contract contracts? will be the evidence to substantiate that you are enrolled in a service. But you're not going to care if it says there's three separate units. You just want to see a contract that they're going to pick up the truck. On the contract, it should indicate the three units or the entire building or however it's worded. Okay. okay. I can do that. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other citizens that wish to speak? Hello. Helen Salsi. 40 Fox Run. I've owned my two family um, for about 22 years now. So I am right next to Bonnie and Mike. We have a little small little um, one way private road. So we have to bring our trash down to the main road, which is Mara Street. We were given several years ago, they were dumped off um, beautiful toters. Uh, I had two trash and two recycling bins. So I called a few years ago and, and explained to the town hall that I asked for my numbers. So two of, the, two of the buckets I have that with the same number. The other two, I don't know who got them because like Mike said, Mike Chickering said, we're on the main road. So our barrels get thrown, they, they go all over. So if I end up opting out because I'll have to pay for two floors, um, I did call and give the numbers. So if my numbers don't match when they come to get my, the, t the four totes that are in my yard, what happens with that? As long as you produce those totes, you'll be fine. All right, thank you so much. Because we, we will bring up, we register to those to other people. So as long as you can, because we understand that things get mixed up. Yeah. So if you can, yeah. if you can come up with the, with the, uh, the totes that you were dropped off, you'll be fine. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, George Shenya, 23 Teresa Rav. 
my understanding of this part of the hearing is dealing with opting out. Am I correct? Correct. Can I make a suggestion that uh, either in the in the you can you can change uh, what is presented tonight? Am I correct? Correct. Well, yes. yes. Within. <clears throat> It can be changed, yes. Right. yes. So once you vote on this, you, it'll, it can come back, am I correct? Yes. For, for another change. Correct. So what, what I would like to suggest to the board is that you bring to the community a different idea with opting out, maybe some options. Uh, one of the biggest things that I've heard from people as a counselor is the fact that if they opt out today, they have to wait to opt back in a year or nine months, whatever it might be. So maybe some consideration could be given that in the event somebody opts out and three months later they want to come back in, that you would consider having a regulation that would allow that instead of waiting the nine months. <clears throat> the other thing I would also like to suggest that in your bylaw or in your review of your bylaws as you go on is that you consider a senior citizen discount in the regulation as, as this thing progresses. You've got a difficult challenges ahead of you. I know you, you, know, you need to get this thing going, but as this thing evolves, there's gonna be a lot of problems and I would hope that you could, would consider those type of things with opting in, opting out, senior citizens discount, and also the people that uh, have multiple families that if they can prove that they're empty, but those same people need to prove that they're going to stay empty. Uh, you know, you can have an empty apartment for eight, nine months, they go to Florida, they should be allowed the option to be able to opt out during that time. You, you'll have some uh, apartments that are never, never rented. I believe if you have a provision in your rules that that person can show that nobody's living there and they're opting out, maybe the meter, <laughs> the water meter to that particular place is gone. Because with sewer and water bills, you still get a sewer and water bill even if you don't use the water, as long as that meter is in the house. So just getting those things together would, would be, I think, a good and fair, honest uh, effort for the community. The other thing was when we voted this on as a counselor per unit, the unit was what we felt was the fairest way to go. Because we could have done just the taxpayers and the properties, so a single taxpayer would be paying the same as a six family. Is that really fair to the single family homeowner? We felt it wasn't. We felt it was important that each resident home, each unit paid their fair share. Now it's up to the owners to decide how that fair share is going to be utilized, whether they go to another vendor or they, they pay the, the money. But that's what we as counselors, when we voted this in, we voted it as a per unit because it was the fairest thing at the time for the, all the residents of this community, all the homeowners. It wasn't fair for a single rate payer to, to offset the cost related to a six family, four family, whatever. So that's why they ended up with each per unit. Now maybe as this year goes on, you're gonna find out that that's not the way to go, but you as Board of Health members have the option of opening up that bylaw and relooking at it. And I would just suggest, I hope you would do that as, as time goes on and, and take the suggestions of the people and, and, and see if it can work better for them. Thank you. Late, um, by no means is this is the this is going to be the trash for the next five years as we sign the contract. We're going to be making changes all the time, and the changes that the citizens bring out tonight that affects me as well. And we will be working on those changes to do the best that we can. This is not just this is this is what we have for now. Whether you like it or not, this is what we have for now. But there's going to be changes as time goes on. Because this affects everybody. It doesn't just affect the community, but every, it affects us up here. We, 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 uh, we're in the same predicament. But we're going to be making changes, and we're going to be taking everything that the citizens said tonight into consideration. And we're going to try to make it better, if it, as, as best as we can. And thank, thank you, you, Mr. Shenya, for those, um, 
suggestions. Thank you. Thank you. And we ask for the town's involvement too, you know, when, when committees are coming about and, you know, suggestions and times for, you know, we, we ask for the community to, you know, come together and, you know, uh, help us, you know, and in and, and whatever ways, you know, so that we can make, you know, a, a unified, you know, decision. And, and I fully agree with your saying. The problem that happened during this whole process that this trash was going to be done, I went to many meetings and nobody showed up. There was no citizens there. Two, three people showed up, and there was nobody else there to be able to voice the concerns. Right. So you went by what you were hoping would be the best thing. There was no citizens' input. Nobody came to be able to voice their opinions. Right. They didn't care. But now that this is happening, look at tonight. I wish we had more people like this at all the meetings. Yeah. Things would get done. Things would be better. But you are 100% correct. And, they, and then they, yeah. And then there'd be a better understanding as to what the repercussions of, you know, uh, the information not being understood correctly, because there's also a misunderstanding of, of, of information. You know, like, the, it, yes, we understand that the fees are here and, and, you know, it's difficult times for everybody and we talked in many different capacities, but then how does this then unfold? Does that mean higher taxes for people? Does that mean this? You know, so we're um, definitely, uh, you know, Oh, sorry. Can you hear me? Just move the mic. Yeah, yeah so, um, you know, like I was saying, you know, sometimes it's a lot of misinformation as well. Um, so folks don't understand, you know, what, what the repercussions sometimes are. Does that mean higher taxes for town? Does that mean this? That's why, you know, community involvement is so important when these things do come up. So, um, are there any other... Um, Citizens? Citizens. Paul Woodard, 1719 Brick Row. Uh, I have a two family, which I've chosen not to rent the other side for a substantial amount of years because I don't want to live next to anybody. Okay, fair enough. And I'm a single guy. I generate one bag of trash, just like that gentleman was saying, one bag of trash every two, three weeks. And I haven't used your services because they didn't pick them up anyhow, and they never dropped me off a, a tote for it. I haven't used your services in seven years. I take my trash to work every week, or every two weeks, or whenever I get a bag. So there ought to be an option to be able to opt out on that without making it so complicated. This is just another tax. It should have been, oh, the dump should have been well managed, much better managed. This should be a, still a free thing. I, I know it's that boat sailed, but it, it's like this is just another tax to everybody and somebody like me that's just by myself. I don't, I don't generate a lot of trash and I have an option where I've got 11 dumpsters at work. I can take a bag. So I need to be able to opt out of this thing. So, uh, don't make a requirement that you have to have it in writing or contract because that's, you know, that's just not the way things go sometimes. Well, that's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name's Scott Lamica, 257 Southbridge Road. I live in Charlton. I got a dumpster. I have a mother, and I'm gonna take her trash, I would like to bring it to my dumpster. And I have a two family on High Street. I would like to take her trash and bring it to my dumpster. I'm paying $80 a month. It's half full, I'm gonna fill it up. I'm paying for it, I'll fill it up. Now what I'm going to say is you guys say you're, you look for trash around town. I can name two spots right now. It looks like a dump. For one is Sonny's Bar. You ever go by there and look in the back? I used to own that building. It looks like a dump.
I own four buildings in this town. I only got one more left. And I'm glad. And I respect my buildings. It's the way the town's going, that's why. If you want to look on Clark Street, over by the river, people are throwing the trash over there. You guys ever take a ride around town and see the trash? Or are you too busy? I see it a lot. I used to love Southbridge. That's all I got to say. I lived here for 38 years. And I'm glad I moved out. Thank you. Have a good one. Be nice. All right. That's my cup, that's my No. <laughs> Paul Dion, 22 Winters. <laughs> Paul Dion, 22 Winter Street. Okay, all right. Ah, uh, I just forgot what I was gonna say. Ah. Uh. <laughs> um. Oh, I just forgot. What I, was gonna say. I just say. Uh, I'll come back to you. Yeah. Um. Oh, as as far as um, uh, tenants are concerned, like that. Um, you know, a, a big issue of mine for, that, for like 35 years has been a, a big issue of mine is like a, when it comes to trash and tenants and like that, it seems like it's always been landlords are responsible for everything that the tenants do wrong when it comes to the trash, put the wrong stuff in the wrong bag, you, you know, and, and, and like that, right? And, and, and it seems to me that this has really got to stop. I mean, this is not right. It's not fair. And landlord has to suffer and pay these fines and stuff like that. But, yeah. I, I could go on and on and on, but I, I think I said enough. Sure. Um, it, 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 this is totally not unfair like that. Why, why, not, why, why do we not have some kind of jurisdiction over, over the, uh, the tenants like that, but, and, and they get away with it like that, and, and, and they can continue doing it like that, and the landlord is still stuck paying the fines and stuff like that. You know, trash cans are all where they're not supposed to be. The wrong things are in the wrong trash cans, and it goes on and on and on. Sure. And, you know, and it's been 35 years like this, and uh, I still forgot what I was going to, the other thing I was going to say. Uh, <laughs> it'll come back to me. Uh, <laughs> I, get, I get upset, and I totally forget. What, uh, but anyway, that was part of it. There. Uh, uh, okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. Are there any other? Is, what, other is, is there anything that can be done about this? So I know that for me, as a person that manages also, you know, buildings and has, you know, um, I'm always changing up um, my contracts with my tenants, and and yeah, you know, yeah. I'm changing them all the time and making them, uh, you know, accountable for things. And I think that you know it's okay. We're, as landlords, we don't have to take on. There's no way of enforcing it. Um, you know, how does the landlord enforce that? You know, I, I mean, it definitely isn't a wording. And I, mean, I know a lot of things I talk to my attorney about. But again, this is like what well, I'm, I'm speaking for myself, you know, and he helps me draw up the contracts, right? And, and, and what's in the, you know, like what's within yeah. laws and, you know, tenant landlord laws, you know, yeah. and all those kind of things. But definitely yeah. sometimes you got to, you know, be changing them annually even because things I mean, are changing. And, yeah. you know, uh, so I would definitely look into like what contracts or lease or, you know, your lease agreements and all that. And then, you know, kind of. Contract you know. or no contract like that. Again, we're talking about, again, it's all on the landlord. Yeah, yeah. Again, again yeah. instead, of the, instead of the guilty party like that, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, this, this, um, I'm talking about some, it's, it's like a child, right? You have a child and uh, they do something wrong, right? Well, there's a consequence for doing something wrong, right? Sure. And so you're going to make them suffer that consequence so that way they don't do it again. I mean, this is simple, simple whatever, you know, uh, totally simple got science. It. Uh, it, it, the landlord really has no control. You can't. You can't. You, you, no matter what you write in the in in, in the in the lease, right? It, it, you know, there's no. 
whether, whether they listen to you or not, there's no consequences. Yeah, that's and the okay, fun thing about you know, being The consequences should be with, with, with this here. Okay, now the reason why I'm saying that is because there's consequences for the landlord. Okay, so shouldn't there also be consequences for the... Anyway, okay, I think I just remembered what the other thing I was going to talk about was... Uh, uh, did I hear right? I, I, I've heard some rumors and I, I don't know. Did I hear right? Something about we're not going to... We're not going to be able to go to the, you know, our uh, hazardous waste and all that other stuff like that, or whatever once a month like that, and bring loads of trash over. You know, like your know, construction materials and stuff like that. Go to the Barefoot Road anymore and drop off any any anything anymore. This no, is what I heard. That that's been closed, right? In re are you referring referencing, sir, the hazardous waste day coming up on the thirtieth? Is that still going to be going on? Yes. Oh, yeah. sure. I've been hearing yeah. that's going to be all But they will not be that. taking household trash. And, that, and, and, and then this, the, the, the other, the other this, uh, was it every three months there was another thing to where you can go in and bring your, your TVs and your refrigerators and stuff like that. We're not going to be able to do that no more? No, we hope to continue those. Okay, we hope to. Uh, yeah, yes. But yes, again, yes. is that something that's up to change or is that something they're, they're voting? Or, um, that, that's, uh, that's up to uh, internal discussions, the health department. Uh, but we are very optimistic at this point that these types of take-back days will continue yeah. at this point. We're going to have take-back days, yeah, but we, I, was talk, yeah. I, thought, I thought you were talking about out random to take stuff to the... I thought you were speaking about taking stuff randomly to the, uh, to the to Barefoot Road. But as far as waste days and hazardous days, stuff like that, we're still going to have those programs. Okay. But there won't be no more random run like that. No. You know, like there used to be... A, before it became Casella, for instance, like that, they used to have a nice setup. Before it was Casella, uh, the, the other place before that, what was it called there? Transfer station, is that what you're talking about? Well, you could bring, you can bring your, your stuff to the... Right, right, you, you, you had this big pile. We, we no like longer that. have that. Right, right, that's all gone now. They got that big machine and everything. Yeah. Yes. But back then it was nice, you know, you had, okay, you brought all your wood over here, you brought all your thing like that, you brought all your, you know, your sticks, metal and your, you know what I mean? Um, Thank you. Oh, I think still going. Oh. Yeah, okay. Well, all right. I was okay. All right. All right, we'll go with that. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Go ahead. Is there anybody else that. Oh, please step on up. Kevin wants to speak. Henry Simonelli, 18 Champion Street. Uh, it's been covered before about uh, charging for units that aren't occupied, and uh, I just want to express a couple more thoughts on that. I, it, it's unfair to charge that way. Uh, you have a number of people who have vacant units, maybe they're just using storage, uh, or I think even the snowbirds were mentioned who fly south for the winter. Mm -hmm. uh, and with a private company, we could simply call and cancel the trash for the six months or whatever, if that's the way you were traveling. Uh, in my situation, I have a home with a home office that occupies three out of the four units that I have. And that's my home. And that's, uh, now I've got to pay. We generate one three-quarter filled bag a week of trash. So I think it would be more equitable to charge per container. Now you have a measure of usage. By the container, you have um, 96 gallons up to, but even if you only fill them with the three-quarter size bag, that's probably the minimum that you would allow. But by charging by the container, now you have a measure. If, if you've got four units and there's only one container out there, that's the only usage that you have. So policing the usage is really um, as simple as we'll return your unused containers. And now if you know that only one container is allocated to me, then that's all I should be charged for. Um, and the other uh, 
regulation that you have in here is um, no sharing of containers. That seems to be inefficient. And I, I think it's been touched on by a, a number of people here, but, but as long as the trash is contained, what's the difference whether, whether that we're sharing it or not? It's actually more efficient to have it, you know, three people contained in one, one container instead of three separate containers that have to be dealt with. So, you, the board, as the regulating authority, are charged with the duty to accommodate the citizens here. Um, I will say, shame on me for not getting involved in the process sooner. That, that certainly would have helped, I'm sure, but as you can see, once, once you receive notice, which I got today, um, that there was going to be a fee involved, um, then many of us came here to speak about it and, and with some good ideas. And I hope that you take those into consideration before settling on the regulation that you're going to end up with and that we'll have to live by. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any other citizens? Okay. Kevin, would you like to say something? Thank you. I just want to say um, I've been working on this regulations document for some time now. Um, is it 100% right? Maybe not. Uh, we tried our best. Uh, there wasn't a lot of people at our meetings when we were trying to get input. I'm glad tonight everybody showed up. A lot of input was received. Um, I agree with a lot of things that people have said. I just want to let people know that this document is not set in stone. It can be changed at any time. Do I feel that it will be changed? Yes, I do. Most likely in the near future after what I have heard from you people tonight. As far as that pamphlet that you got, Mr. Simonelli, I got mine today too. My personal opinion, it's a joke. Casella said they'd have that out roughly 45 days ago. It doesn't explain anything. And I sit on this board. It's a joke. I agree with you being frustrated too. But I just want people to know this is not set in stone. We can change this at any time. Thank you. We, 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 have, to, we have to implement what we have right now. Like, like Kevin said, we're subject to change all the time. And, and, and like Mr. Simonelli has great ideas, Mr. Shenya. Mr. Shenya goes to our meetings. A lot of people don't, but we need public input. And this public input is not going to be pushed to the side. It's going to, it's going to be, this is a serious thing. This affects everybody. This affects 17 and a half thousand people. So by, by no means is this, as Kevin said, etched in stone. Yes, of course. The assessor's office is going to be assessing us based on whatever it is that you do. So if it is the wrong decision, Aren't they kind of locked in for, for the fiscal year coming around? As far as, you mean the price? Right. Or do we all have to file abatements if you decide to so change it? What I was saying is the changes could be made as far as the, the, the $115 fee that was set by council. That might not get changed, but what I'm saying is changes as far as what we've heard tonight, people talking about vac uh, vacant properties, your snowbirds, uh, mm -hmm. stuff like that where we might, you know, things could change as far as that goes mm -hmm. um, on that end of it. As far as the uh, billing department, right? that's not my, that, yeah, I that's understand. a whole different I, I, department. But I think there may be co some constraints. Um, however, I guess that depends on how the assessor will handle the billing. Uh, right. uh, abatements would be available if you did change it, but it's an additional process, although they may do that simply by a letter instead of a formal process. I guess that's up to how they handle that. Yeah. So what I was trying to say, Rick, is, is this is something new, not for just you, for us as well. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Are we going to yeah. make mistakes? Or we, you're right, we're going to make mistakes. That's the only way we're going to learn, and hopefully we can fine tune this to where it satisfies all the citizens in this town. Sure, and I, and I appreciate that and, effort. And it, 
the thing is, is we're, this goes into effect four days. We are way behind the deadline on yeah. this. All right, well, thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Are there any other citizens to wish to speak? Seeing none, Jasmine? Uh, yep, I have a letter from a citizen, Louise Sigwing, from 728 Main Street in Southbridge. Um, dear Town Hall meeting, to whom this may concern, I wanted to attend the meeting but was unable to tonight. One of the items on the agenda is the new contract with Casella for the trash pickup. The rates will be $115 per quarter, which is $460 per year, which averages $8.85 a week. This is a reasonable price for someone who generates trash every week. I live by myself and generate only half to one full plastic grocery bag of trash per week. When I put my trash out about every three months, both containers are still usually not totally full. I would think that other persons living alone, especially the elderly, are not generating that much trash either. And for those on fixed incomes, this will be an unfair burden to, for them to pay. Please consider a lower rate for those of us not generating weekly trash. Sincerely, Louise. This was handwritten, so it was difficult yeah. to read. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, thank you, Louise. We Any received the letter. We hear you, and you know it, it's going to go into consideration with everything else that we're considering. All right. Yes. Go ahead, sir. So this is a suggestion as you move forward. This is only the people that could make it because we got the notice today. How many more people are feeling like we are? And for someone that is gonna pay for three units and generate one or two bags a week, it's a lot cheaper to just hire another company and, and tell you guys, okay, we have it all taken care of but then what we're going to be doing is bringing trucks from all different companies all over and plugging up the town. If that's part of the concern and you'd like us all to stick with Casella, then the sooner you think on this, the better. Because I, I for one, three units, I don't really want to pay $1,300 a year when I can hire someone just to take my one bucket every other week. But if everyone here plus all the people that weren't able to be here because they just saw this when they got home from work tonight. If all of them do that, we're gonna have trash trucks all over the place at all different times. So this is kind of a more serious problem than just a little bit of stuff blowing around in the road. So the sooner it gets taken care of, uh, that was my suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just say, as far as residents just finding out tonight, I understand everybody, either today, tomorrow, yesterday, has received that pamphlet from Casella. I just want people to understand that the Board of Health and the department has, whether it's Facebook, the internet, the town's webpage, postings in the newspaper, we have been posting about this for some time now. And I just want people to know that it wasn't just all of a sudden everybody got this pamphlet in the mail. That's all. We, we've been trying to get the word out there that these changes are coming, and they're coming soon. I told my wife I wasn't going to speak here, but a lot of you who have known me for the last 50-some-odd years in Southbridge, I'm the one who started the cable system here. I'm the one who installed all the speakers, et cetera. And I've been talking with Marissa. She's been very, very good with me helping out, and I've been trying to critique her about her web page and everything else there. A lot of the information 
is not being received by the residents of Southbridge because the subscribership for the cable is almost down to nothing. Spectrum is having a real hard time with that. A lot of the information that was disseminated wasn't correct. And we've been trying to work, I'm working with her to make sure that it is correct. And then like you say, a lot of the meetings that you have that you'd share in communication, people don't see that at all. Southbridge News, once a week, but they don't cover that, the reporters don't, because I went down there and asked them, how much of this recycling and curbside? We don't even touch it anymore. Worcester, the Telegram subscribers, way down. So the only communication you get is when we go to a coffee shop, we're talking there, and you say, hey, by the way, you're getting a bill for $115 added to your water sewer bill. Well, when did that come about? No clue. Snowbirds in Florida, Arizona, this, that there. What mail they get forwarded. And all your flyers, they don't get forwarded. It's only certified mail and things that are like first class, etc. So yes, you've been doing this for a year and a half. You've worked hard to get all the contracts and everything else there, but the bulk of the people in this town, this is a revelation for them, especially with the post office. Because I talked to the two carriers, I even talked to the postmaster, same thing. It was dropped off, we had to quickly sort it, and that's why it got out there, so some of it would be delivered tomorrow. And that's the only flyer that we've received, the first letter, first postcard, things like that. We just don't get it. So I know you mentioned today on the opt-out, it's something you're going to discuss. It's not set in stone. You're going to start listening to a lot of the questions that were asked, and then hopefully we can come to some kind of a solution. I mean, even like Rick. I mean, I've known Rick fact, all my life, and he was in the same situation there. He's got a place that he lives in, but it's the designation, and he's got, what, half a bag, whatever. And of course, my own personal one, I've already done that. I've already got my dumps or everything else there, but I got my own container. But I used to have five, six bags and uh, recycle. We do a lot of recycling, the whole thing right there. But none of my tenants generate anything. One works at a restaurant, so he eats. The other one, he's divorced. He's at his ex-wife's, and the other three, they're just basically my own family. And we, we, we recycle, we use very little at all. On any given week, I'm lucky to have one, maybe two trash bags. And actually, when you look in there, they're only like half full, but just that I want to make sure it's there. Recycling we do, but now we're really cutting back on all that waste and everything else. And like I say, I'm gone. And then like I say, when I mentioned about my, our family house there, there's, there's been no one in there for six years. And it's, it's not fair, because I called my sister and she goes, what? Because she never got any communique, because never got to the house. And whatever mail was forwarded, nothing about any of this. So just please, you know, keep in mind, there's a lot of people, and I know ignorance, you know, it's your fault. But if there is no news that you haven't heard, and how can it be news for you? So please really think about this and the opt-out and things like that. And because we're all an electronic era right now, you can call up any company, terminate a service, restart a service. Yeah, there might be a fee to re-enact it and things like that. Though. So as we get better in doing things here, so the snowbirds who take off, they know they're going to be gone for six months. You just take them out of the system for the six months and they just let you know we're coming back and just reactivate me. And through our discussions here, we talked about they're supposed to have in their Casella trucks a camera that's supposed to read those numbers so they will be accurate as to what they're actually picking up. And then some other people asked about the different colors of the trash bins and things like that. So if that's all working, then the information you get in your data should be pretty much accurate and up to date. And so like if someone said, you know, I'm not going to be here, you shouldn't see that trash bin number come up until they come back. It's been put away in the garage, the house is locked up and they're gone. So that's the thing we're talking about. And like I say, a lot of us are all seniors. So we're now enjoying the good type of life where we go on vacation. So if I'm on vacation, how much trash are you going to pick up from me? Nothing. I know it's a service, it's a formula and everything else there, but you've got to have other things that you can institute 
especially with all the electronic data that we have right now. You should be able to turn something on and turn something off that fast. And a lot of towns are now using outside services, so that's something with the billing that we're going to have to deal with, because a lot of times it's not the town that's actually doing the billing. It's a town in Everett and Malden or whatever. Because I have the same problem with down at the Cape. I can't pay my bill, so I have to drive down there to pay the bill at Town Hall. And if I'm not there on time, well, then I just wasted a trip. But everything is all being outsourced. But that's how the electronic age is doing things. So you should be able to do the same thing. So as you work with the accounting and the finance and everything else, it should be made a lot easier. So I just wanted to add that. Hey, thank thank you. you, sir. Okay, we're going we're to move on. We spent... Sir, are you going to discuss anything that we haven't discussed already? Uh, yes, I'm different. Because we're ready to move on. We pretty much killed us, but you're welcome to speak. Okay. Um, as far as the trash cans, over the years, uh, so many people, are, especially on my side of town, over, the, over by the hospital like that, um, windy days like that, right, you get trash out like that, the, the, the truck comes over, picks up your trash like that, and, um, and now the trash can is empty, but on windy days the trash gets knocked over and like that, and, the, and nobody, nobody has the original numbers that go to the right houses anymore. That, you know, mine too, and, you know, it's not the original numbers like that. Now, how does that affect us? As, as long as you have a tote, the tote to the, as long as you have a tote, do you have a, do you have a tote? Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Do you have a tote? Uh, a tote? You mean? Do you have a bucket? No, the two, the, do you have one? Two. The, then you're all set. I have a bucket and it's not mine, it's my neighbor's. But I'm not going to go to my neighbor that's 89 years old and say, listen, you have my bucket. As long as you can produce a bucket, you're fine. The guy's been in two wars, I'm going to say, listen, hey, Ray, you got my tote. As long as you can produce one, you're fine. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, we're going to move you. on. Now, we're required to vote on this, so we're going to the next public, um, to, the next, to, the next, to the next one. Okay, our next public hearing is the request to reconsider solid waste and recycling fee structure. Oh. Excuse me, we're going to vote on this agenda item. The public hearing item amendment to Chapter 2, Storage and Disposal of Solid Waste. Second. Jane Karabowski? Yes. Jasmine Canonas? Yes. Kevin Splain? Yes. Thank you. The public hearing is now closed at 7.52. Thank you for all that showed up and thank you for all the suggestions. Bye -bye. Citizens Forum, are there any citizens that wish to speak on anything other than that's on the agenda tonight. Seeing none. Agenda item number five, chairman's announcements. I have none. Agenda item number six, health director's announcements. Yes, thank you, Chair. I'd like to make an announcement. We have a new employee started on Monday. The new administrative assistant, Patty Julian. Welcome. Is that, it? Is that it, Mr. Director? Yes. Agenda item number seven, board members' announcements. Mr. Chair, I have one. Um, in light of tonight's topics that the citizens brought up. I'd like to make a motion that we have a meeting next Thursday, April 4th, downstairs to discuss what the citizens brought up tonight as far as vacant apartments, vacationing, whatever it might have been. I think we should uh, discuss that. Um, like I said, tonight there's going to be changes. 
let's get on them now. We still have time. The bills don't go out for another two and a half weeks. We might be able to get it in. Well, our next meeting is April 11th, the week after that. Then it's too late. April, April 11th, the bills are already going out. April 4th, they're not. So that's why I make the motion that we meet April 4th, 6 o'clock downstairs. So would you rather move up the uh, meeting from April 11th to April 4th, or do you want to continue with the April 11th meeting? We can combine them on the 4th. That's fine by me. So you'd rather switch the 11th to the 4th? Please. Do I have a motion? Do I have a motion? I did the motion. Do, you, do I have a second? All we're doing is switching out April 11th to April 4th. Like We'd like to, is it to, to switch our meeting to April 4th as opposed to April 11th, 6 o'clock in the veterans' room? Dan Grabowski? Yes. Kevin Splain? Yes. Jasmine Canones? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Agenda item number eight, scheduled next meeting, which is April 4th, Thursday, in the veterans' room at 6 o'clock. Agenda item number nine. Adjournment? Motion. Dan Grabowski? Yes. Kevin Splain? Yes. Jasmine Canones? Yes. 